So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to burn a CD in Samplitude and prepare it to be sent off for manufacturing. The first thing to do is go to the file menu and select new virtual project and then under project template select two track CD MSF and click OK. Next thing to do is to change the workspace down at the bottom left hand corner here from easy to master. And also I'm going to press I on the keyboard to open the project options. Set the snap to objects, objects snap to edges of other objects. You'll see the reason for that later. And also make sure you have CD arrange mode enabled. And it's probably worth checking auto crossfade mode as well. So click OK to close the project options. You'll notice that now I'm using the master workspace. There are some extra icons along the top here. These are for putting in markers and also there's a CD and DVD burning icon. Next, if I click on CD DVD menu, you can see the CD arrange mode is enabled and also click on set pause time. And you can see it's set to two seconds, which is the red book standard for spaces between CD tracks. So I'm going to import the audio tracks now. So we'll click on the manager tab here at the bottom and go to the file browser. You can also browse through the hard drives by clicking in the drop down menu at the top. And you can also go up one level by clicking the yellow icon there, just like you do in Windows. Click on the options and we have load options. It's important to have load all files to selected track enabled. Double click on mastering and go to gateway, which is the folder where all my audio tracks are. They're all mixed down to 32-bit float, which is a good idea if you're planning on doing extra processing as it retains the quality. Next, I'm going to select the first track and scroll down and shift left click to select the bottom track. So all tracks in between are now selected and hit return and all the tracks are loaded into the VIP. So if I zoom in, you can see now there is a gap between each track. If I draw in a range, you can see that gap is now two seconds. Check the second gap. Draw in a range. Yes, it's two seconds. So all the wave files have a default two second pause between them. You'll notice that these tracks haven't been topped and tailed. So it's important to deal with that first. So if I grab the bottom object handle of the left object, I can resize that and also add a fade out. If I double click on the object, under position fades, we can adjust the fade out. Same with the start of the next object, adjust that. It's a good idea to make sure you have this special mouse mode selected, which is link all objects and curves to current track. And what happens there is if I make this smaller, you'll see if I select an object, all the objects to the right move with it. So that retains the time position of those objects. I'll undo that. So I'll zoom in again. Next thing I'm going to do is draw in a two second range and then grab the object to the right and pull it so it butts up against the right hand side of the range. This is why I said it was important to have snap to objects enabled here. So we can now work our way through the objects like this, resizing where necessary and putting fade outs when needed and draw in another two second range and drag the object to the right up against it. The quick way to move through the objects is to select the object, hold down Control Alt and right cursor and it moves on to the next object. I'll just do it one more time. Size the front end of that, draw in the two second range and snap the right hand object. The same again with the next put a fade out there. In fact, I'm going to put a long fade out there, I think. You can change the curve, pull it in a bit further and drag the... So we've got more of a fade out. And then resize the front end again. Draw in the two second range and snap it again. Obviously, you need to audition the fade outs to make sure you've got them correct. And also you may want to adjust the pauses to suit the sort of music you're working with. So once you've topped and tailed all the tracks, the next thing to do is to go up to where it says auto, 
click there and all the markers are inserted automatically with the names of each track. So if I zoom in here, you can see now that the marker is placed right at the beginning of the object. So that's a very handy feature, saves you doing the markers one by one. And also you can grab an object and all the objects behind it will be selected. And as you pull it to the right, all the markers move with it, which is also very useful. It's probably a good idea to do the topping and tailing before you actually insert the markers, and then you don't have to make too many adjustments with the markers, hopefully none at all. So the next thing you may want to do is some EQing, and the beauty of Samplitude is that you can use plugins on each individual object using the object editor. So I'll double click on the first object, open the object editor, and then go to the effects menu, plugins, and FX insert, so I'm going to open the FFT filter. Play some of the track. As you can see, it was giving you a real time readout of the frequency response. There are several tools here. One is like a pencil tool, where you can make some fine changes if you need to. This crank handle looking thing is for making coarser adjustments. So if I grab around 50 hertz, I can roll off some bottom end, just pull it down like that. And also there's a kind of notch tool. If you click below the line, it will give you a boost. And if you click above, it will cut the frequency. You can also change the resolution here up to 8192. So when you've done your EQing, you can save it as a preset and you can also use that filter on other tracks if you want to. So we have the filter inserted on object one. So if you want to quickly copy that plugin to the second track, click on the copy icon, select the second object and click paste and so on and so forth. This will also transfer the settings of the FFT filter as well. Notice as I click on the objects, the object editor refreshes and the name of the track is reflected along the top of the object editor. It's track five, you see. So you can work your way through like that. Saves a lot of messing around with inserting plugins all the time. The next thing I'm going to do is level match the individual objects. And for doing this, I'm going to open the ammunition plugin I've done a tutorial on using this. Again, by using the object-based approach, you can fine-tune each object to get the levels correct. I also find it useful to open the visualization here. This can also help you check the RMS and peak levels. So in ammunition, I'm gonna click on this switch and set it to output, and also set the RMS level to minus 10 dBFS, a fairly conservative level nowadays. Then you can wind back the threshold control until the meters are hovering around the zero dB mark. So this will give you an RMS level of minus 10 dBFS. Also notice the white line on the peak meter. That also gives you an RMS reading as well. So that's the first track. I've set the threshold to minus 11 dB, which has given me an RMS level of around minus 10 dBFS. So the next thing is to click on the next object which updates the object editor. I'm going to insert another ammunition. You can of course do this using the copy and paste command I just showed you. So now we can adjust the level of the second track in a similar fashion using the threshold control. Set the switch to output again and the RMS reference to minus 10 dBFS. So that track needed a minus 9 dB threshold setting. So then it's a case of repeating that procedure with all the other tracks. So this gives you a good starting point for matching the levels of individual songs. You'll probably find you need to make some adjustments because the dynamics of some songs may seem louder than others and vice versa. So the fact that you can use inserts on each individual object and fine tune the levels, adjust the EQ, and add any other plugins you may want to use. This gives you an extra flexibility in the mastering process.